want to say hello to everyone that's on the live right now my name is Chanel you can find me at it's Chanel on all social platforms just waiting for Jesse so hello everyone that's tuning in just waiting for Jesse to join the live <laughs> just bear with me guys <laughs> This life could be full of characters and it is impossible to please everybody. You have 365 days in a year. But the only one you need is put no food in your kitchen. Live your life to study them. You can live to please none of them. I may have been your friend. Jesse has just joined the live. So I just want to say welcome everyone to Push Soka's live interviews. And today's guest is college boy, Jesse. I'm just gonna join him in the live. Hello, hi. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, Jesse. Blessings, blessings. Blessings, how are you? I cool, man. I can fix my camera. Yeah, you good? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah? How's life it? and alive, on the live, pushing <laughs> soca. <laughs> <laughs> How's your Tuesday going? Um, It was a, a, a little hectic, you know, up and down on the road, trying to get things in place. Um, So we're trying to relax now for a few minutes, but we're still at work, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, so you're in right now? Yeah, I'm actually at uh, a little meeting here. Um, right before I head out to do a little virtual show. Okay, okay. Yeah. So before we start, are you hearing me good? Yeah, very clear, very clear. Cool. cool. All right. So, so now wave at kills <laughs> since she just seen her joined. Um, yeah. So, 
tell me about how you started your mus your musical journey. Let's start with that. Um, music for me started since I was seven years old. Yeah. I started um, singing calypso in primary school. Mm. And throughout my entire school life, it's been um, primary school, secondary school, it's been calypso and then soca. I started soca when I was like in form four, yeah. uh, which is equivalent to like 14, 15 years old. And I um, entered the National School Soca Monarch. Um, and from there, you know, we still been putting out music. I, I released my first project in 2009 with the Millionaire Family, mm -hmm. um, 747 Rhythm, then the Bedspread Rhythm, and then throughout the years, been just releasing music and also writing music um, for myself and other artists in the industry. So that's been my journey. Um, yeah. Up until 2020, you know, we participated in the Soka Monarch too. Yeah, we're gonna get to that, definitely. definitely. Yeah. So has Soka always been the genre that you wanted to sing? Because you have like such an amazing voice. Your vocals are on point. Like so yeah, soca, the genre yeah. I mean, I I dabbled in in reggae and dancehall before. Just you know, just experimenting yeah. with with music. And I have some releases in reggae and dancehall also. But um, soca been the foundation. And it's been you know where my focus has been. I must say thanks to Eon Pantin who is a recognized um, manager in the business. He managed, you know, Bungie Gallin and Asylum for years, even KMC. And I had a meeting with him a couple of years ago where he kind of opened my eyes to, to, to the genre of music that I should represent. And I think that was the period when I decided to say, you know what, the focus should just be on the, the soca and um, to give reggae all the rest, reggae and dancehall and other genres. So yeah, that, that's part of the journey, man. Okay, so when did you stop doing dance or on reggae then? Like probably when was this song once in our lifetime? Probably about five, six years ago. Yeah, probably about six years ago. Okay. Yeah. So you played football. You yeah. That you played football. So was you doing football, college, well, university, and music at the same time? Yeah, okay. I did everything at the same time. So you yeah. always was in music, like you. So since you were seven, you just music right yeah now. music all the time and there yeah. was a period when i actually didn't want to put out music mm -hmm. um that was 2010 i believe yeah. and um i was on the national team and at that time my focus was just strictly on football at that level mm -hmm. and orlando octave was the one to say you need to release at least one song every year i mean you know just to keep your name and and, and keep music out you need to release music and even during that time you know i continue releasing music so so give thanks to him for at least you know giving me that advice and and, and ensuring that i have you know my name in the mix i think throughout the years okay all right yeah. uh, well let's talk about your two latest releases that i absolutely love so much i must say your visuals are on point yes <laughs> Your, your music yeah. those are really good quality just it looks amazing so well done on that thank so you tell us about you um is it your song catching up catching yeah catching up? yeah live your yeah. life yeah you know how did it all start like tell us about that um catching up was produced by mevon explicit mevon and um mevon and i i mean i've known mevon for years and we just haven't gotten the time to do work before the pandemic and i'm just happy that the opportunity came about and we were able to get some music done so mevon also produced the um worry less that i did on the one link rhythm mm -hmm. and then so we we worked on the um staycation rhythm that i have catching up on and um so i mean the song was written by myself produced by explicit mevon the music video was um directed by our team zig boy um also, we worked with um, Madhead City, who supported also with, 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 with the visual side of things. But all my videos, you could look at just is Zig Boy. We've been doing all the visuals so for my work. And apart from just visuals, they've been supporting me in management and everything else for all these years. So um, give thanks to the team. That's amazing. So you wrote both songs? On, on the two songs? Yes. You wrote both yeah, songs? The, both songs, both songs I wrote. Um, mm -hmm. Live Your Life was 
co-written by Sean Stewart, also known as Spine, right. who is he plays so many roles on, on our team. So so yeah. Okay. So where does the inspiration come from when you write music? Life. <laughs> yeah. Inspiration comes from life. I mean, years ago, I have a group of friends who are real fetters. Like they look forward to carnival and they go to all the fets and, and they have a good time. And they would party more than me. And just hanging out with them, mm. I would listen to their stories and I started writing music based on their experiences. So songs like Fling, songs like Temptation, those were songs that were inspired by my friends' experiences. Um, so, you know, give thanks for them. But then, no, we, we, we don't have a carnival. So, mm. and we don't have parties. So we can't just create music on, on that aspect. We have to create music on life. So my music has been inspired by people's experiences in life, not just on the party side of things, but the things that, that they experience. Um, win, loss, draw. You know, everybody win, loss, draw, and, and we experience different aspects of our life. And music, I use music to connect that. And we believe that soca is a genre, not a season. So this is where now the messages have to be 365, you know what I mean, throughout the year and not just on the specific um on the specific season. So yeah, so my music is inspired by life. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what is that message you want to like, you know, send out to your listeners yeah. in music? What's the message that you're really trying to get out there? Yeah. Soca music was created to unite the people in our country. Um, when it was created how many years ago, it was created to bring the East Indian community and the Afro-based community closer, you know, to unite us as a people. And I basically want to continue that with my music. I want to not just unite us for a season, but unite the people of the world throughout the year. So my message is just that feel good, you know what I mean? And, and, and so as itself, the music as itself, it, it makes us feel good. It makes us move. It makes us dance. And I try to, to represent that um, with my music. Yeah. Okay. You're doing a good job, I must say. Big up people on your life. <laughs> big up Aaron Duncan. Big up Miss yeah. Yeah, Big up Private Ryan. <laughs> Fine. Big up yourself, Badge on Republic. I've seen Kyle Phillips on your life too. So, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell us about, you know, you won International Soka Monarch last year. Yeah. You was the groovy king. Tell us about that experience. It's definitely a different experience because um, as as the, as the Groovy King, you know, we would have expected to travel and really meet the audience, the new fans that we, we earned, you know, with the title. But that wasn't that case for me because of the pandemic. So it's just been a period of restructuring and um, somewhat sticking to what our objective is and especially where I am as an artist, it, it provided an opportunity for me now to feed the fans, the fans that I had before and the new fans that came on, feed them with more of me so they could understand, you know, who College Boy Jesse is and what he stands for as an artist. So um, throughout the year, that's what we did. We, we did some restructuring and, um, and we adapted to, to what was in front of us. And then we, we stayed focused on the objective of creating more music and ensuring that equality is the best that we can you know and i think so far so good you know we released five new songs with five new music videos and um the fans now could get to understand who i am and 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 they love any music so far so you know we're in a place of of content but at the same time we're still striving to achieve more okay so yeah. more so the feeling like when you you know you heard your name call like yeah you winner of the groovy so come yeah. on tell us about how you felt in that moment <laughs> I, I mean i was written when i came off the stage so it wasn't even at that very moment i was sitting backstage with some friends that i grew up with in music they actually mm -hmm. wrote black song for the finals last year and they still write so many songs for blacks now so backstage i was sitting with them while he also being um while they were seeing the results. And we already, I mean, we, we did our part and we were celebrating as I came off the stage because we felt like we executed something that, you know, we felt that was good. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like a shock experience for me. It was mm -hmm. just like, okay, 
the father really, you know, he, he give you what you actually work for now. And, and that's how we saw it. So it's like, yeah, boy, the father really, he pay and he see a hard work. And um, it, that was just it for me. So walking out on the stage was like, that is, that is the point that I really could believe that, that God is real. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that way it was for me. I was just, I felt relieved because it was a stressful season for not just me, but for the entire team because there's so many things that happened behind the scenes that we had to to deal with. Yeah. And to come out on top at the end, it felt like, yeah, the father really real. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that sounds amazing, honestly. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so what would you say is the least, the, the thing that you don't like much about your career? Like, what's the least thing you like about your career? Right now, what I don't like the most is performing to cameras. I'm not seeing the people that we perform to. And the few um, situations of seeing people, they wear in mass. Yeah. They don't even smiling you know if they're happy with what you're doing you know? yeah. <laughs> it's it's the worst thing for me right now performing for the cameras is what we have to adapt to yeah but i really really hope that things can get back to normal and um where we could work the way that we used to so i would say yeah so that's the worst thing for me okay do you reckon because i think this whole pandemic might be something that might be long term and it might be like the, the changes, everything being all digital, it might be the new norm. So yeah. if it comes to that, how would that be for you as a, as a, you know, yeah, we have, have, I mean, every show I try to, you know, adapt and find creative ways for me to enjoy it because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. I choose music full time because I wanted to do something that I can enjoy every day. Mm -hmm. And if this is the new, means for me to, to, to express myself musically. I, I guess it's something I have to adapt to and, and learn to enjoy even this way. Um, so yeah, by every show, I try to, to create different things for me to kind of enjoy the moment um, in entertaining the people that are looking on. Yeah. Okay. All right. So tell us about how you're feeling that, you know, Carnival, Trinidad Carnival is cancelled. Like, what's your, how do you feel about that? I, I am not happy it for numerous reasons um from an economic standpoint um for a branding standpoint as as a nation i'm not happy about it i feel like this is the home of carnival across the world mm -hmm. we are the mecca of what carnival the term carnival represents and i feel by not having um representation you know for the year is now providing an opportunity for another location to somewhat claim the title of being the Mecca. I feel like we should have had some some sort of representation like yes it's things are virtual mm. so we could have something properly that we could show the world okay this is how you put on something virtual even during a pandemic. This is how we lead as a um you know to, to still showcase our culture that is so rich. Carnival is the second source of revenue like the second most source of revenue for our country. And I feel like, yes, we may not be benefiting from it by people coming into the country and foreign exchange and whatnot, mm -hmm. but it is still an opportunity for us to have some level of representation. We should have invested in, in it, um, seeing that, yes, they may not be earning, but we have to think about long term. What if the oil run out? You know what I mean? What's going to happen? We have to in continuously invest in the human resource now. And... Um, Trinidad and Tobago is a, is a blessed nation that we have such a rich culture that so many islands and countries around the world do not have. And I think that we take it for granted. So not having a carnival is something that I, I'm, I'm, I'm upset about it. You know, I feel that we should have made wiser decisions as a government. Um, but kudos to all the private promoters and the private the private sector for still trying to have some level of representation and they have my support they have my support because i am a strong patriot of Trinidad and tobago um people and culture and i i mean i just played my part in the mix of things okay okay so what is like carnival for you like tell us about monday and tuesday what do you normally do for i only rode i only rode at ronnie and carol Ronnie and Caro, I only wrote Ronnie and Caro. 
for the past how much years, yeah, I only rode playing masked man. So I mean, big up Ronnie and Caro that 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 been providing that experience for myself and also Terry Lyons, the Calypso Queen. We only rode every year with Ronnie and Caro. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah. you don't really go on the trucks and perform, it's just you just yeah, enjoy yeah. It. You yeah, we do have bits of that too. We do have bits of that, mm -hmm. but you know, we just on the road and then when is our time to entertain coming down to the end of the um of the mass that is, that is our time and we run on the truck and we do a little thing and, and yeah. So what are you gonna miss the most about carnival? <sighs> I miss being tired. <laughs> 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 like yeah. better, better after the lack of sleep, but at the end of the day it's still fun. Because mm. you're doing what you enjoy. I miss, like, like you see the fetting experience? Mm. The fetting experience is this whole year, there are people that you don't ever see because, you know, everybody into their own life and you're working. And, mm -hmm. But you see when it's time to fet, this is where it's like a big family reunion. It's a reunion with all your friends that you haven't seen for years. Mm -hmm. And that aspect of carnival is what I'm going to miss. I miss actually seeing the foreigners coming here and hearing the <laughs> different accents and yeah. then seeing and fashion and people coming and expressing themselves um in effect so that is that is an aspect that i mean it's really emotional because i was teasing a friend just the other day and i was saying you know you're looking like a tourist who now come in for carnival <laughs> and then she started to talk in she new york accent and it's like <laughs> pretending that you know it's actually happening now. and those simple things is what we kind of we miss you know we miss here in wasi on radio um <laughs> True. You know, there are certain elements, you know, my friend Yankee Boy, you know, when Yankee Boy in Trinidad, you know, it's carnival, like, that's the, that's the little element of, of the festival that we, we definitely miss, and now that it's not happening, I think we appreciate it a lot more. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, do you normally, like, perform at a lot of fets? Have you ever performed yeah. at Marshall Monday? I never performed at Marshall Monday. Okay. Mm. I never, and I mean, last, it was the last one, so I, I guess oh. I miss more opportunity. <laughs> Oh, no. But I um I was fortunate enough to have music in the show, you know, being a writer, songwriter, I had a lot of music in the show and I'm grateful for that. Um but yeah, through all the years I've been blessed to touch some of the major stages in Carnival, even from way back when with the Millionaire family. I was so young and I was able to be on the Fire Fed stage and Army Fed stage and, and all these um big stages in Carnival through all the years. Um even Promotion wise too, you know, just being on some of the big stages where some of the big promoters provided an opportunity for young artists like myself. So so yeah, we're grateful. Okay. So you are a songwriter. Have you ever thought about um, you know, embracing a young upcoming artist and, you know, managing them? I mean, the objective is that I think um every artist's objective eventually is to provide some level of mentorship and development for the younger ones. So mm -hmm. it's definitely part of my plan. Um, you know, my team, that's that what we're for. Um, just like my representation of Oka Monarch last year wasn't just me. I was mentored by Mr. Killer, who actually won the year before. And um, it's something that we strive to do in, in our little camp, where um, the development of the younger ones is important. It's not about what we do now. It's always about the, the legacy and then the keeping the art form alive and ensuring that every single year we could raise the quality and raise the level not just with ourselves but the younger generation getting them involved and feeling like this is ours and um it's something that we could we could hold on to and and and, and shop to the world the right way so yeah definitely that is part of the plan yeah because yeah. i know you've done a recent collab with ray yeah which is a uh, up and coming she's i would say she's a rising sensation and it's really nice to see, you know, female artists, young as herself, growing in the industry. Do you know, would you, who else would you like to collab with that's, you know, I would say often coming and growing in the industry? Aaron Duncan. Aaron Duncan. People, I mean, let me, let me say this clear, right? Mm -hmm. We have Aaron Duncan now in the finals for the 2021 Soka Monarch, right? The Monarch. And... He's probably one of the few artists in the finals that have produced his own song and written his own song. And he is the youngest in the finals. So that by itself shows, you know, the, the future, the present, and where the future of the art form could go. So Aaron Duncan is definitely an artist that I will be working with. 
Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've, I've done some, write, some writing for him previously. And um, now I'm just proud to see the development and where he is. And, um, and we're excited to see what the future holds. So definitely Aaron Duncan is, is that person I'll be working with. Okay. I'd like to definitely get him on the live. I don't know if he's on the live. Yes, Aaron, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to reach out to you for an interview. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so you are a patriot. Sure yeah. Diego. You love your country. Mm -hmm. Tell us two things that you love the most about Trinidad and Tobago? What do I love the most? I love the people, boy. I mean, we have the most beautiful woman in the world. Mm -hmm. um, so, as a man... They're not proud enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have the most beautiful woman in the world. I mean, the weather is the best, and I think that way you would appreciate seeing that you're in the cool right now. Yes. Our weather, you know, we have sunshine, 365. Um, and the warmth of the people, we are a very friendly um, community. So there's so many things I love about being a yeah. train big one. And you give us one. You said woman and the people. Give us the next yeah. one. We need the next one. Woman. I say what? Well, the woman, the you people. You said women and people. <laughs> and, the, and the weather. The weather? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, man. <laughs> right. So what can we expect from you this year? Because we expect know you've been doing your thing. You have been yeah. bringing the music. Yeah, so so our objective is not soca is a genre, not a season. So the objective is to keep the music throughout the year. Soca that is. So look out for some cool visuals and some crazy songs coming from me mm -hmm. and um and the team. I mean the young artists in the industry, I think we all on the same objective where we're trying to put out more music throughout the year. To, and now is the best time that we don't have a, a carnival season to see. Now is the best time for us to kind of break that now and to just feed the fans with, with music and good vibes. And that's it. Yeah. All right. So what kind of advice would you give someone who's a up-and-coming or new artist who wants to do soca? What advice would you give them? First thing first, you have to study the business that you're, you're getting involved in. Um, knowing to sing or knowing to write songs or knowing to create is one aspect but learning the business I think is the first thing uh, my foundation it started there Sheldon Mendoza kudos to Sheldon Mendoza where a group of us we were teenagers and we just wanted to sing and every Saturday we would go to Gypsy the Calypsonian he had his studio at his house in Central every Saturday we would go to the house and we want to record we want to record in the studio but they were just have us there teaching us, teaching us, and talking, talking, talking about the music industry. And at that time, we didn't really enjoy that, but I think it was very important for, for the foundation and where I am and where I stand now because I understand what it did for me. So for anybody that's trying to get involved, learn the business, learn every aspect of it. Even Macamillion played an important part in, in helping me understand our little industry here. So that's the first thing. Know the business, know the history of the art form too, because you could understand some of the steps that were taken before your time and steps that you need to take now in our time. So knowing the little history is important. And then, of course, work hard on the craft. Try and learn every day and to develop yourself in different aspects of it, in the songwriting, in the production, in the performance side of things. Um, yeah, and I, I, that's the advice you get from me. And always, I mean, for God first. Yeah. You can't do nothing without God. So you have to stay connected spiritually and then everything else will fall in place. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, before we wrap this up, you are a, you know, you do music, you're a songwriter, you played football before, you... What else is it that we don't know? Like, what do you do? What else, that, what else is it that you do that we have no idea that you just do? Um, I don't know if I want to get that information out, but I'm also an entrepreneur. So, you know, we, we manage... Our this is also okay. uh, and of course the, the label that I represent I'm also a part of the administration of that too so mm -hmm. um, yeah we, we manage different businesses and I guess people don't know that side of me so that occupies my day we have products um, in the supermarket channel and the farm channel so, so yeah that is, that is something else that I do on my own yeah. okay alright well, thank you so much, College, for joining our live today. 
Thanks for having me. So much. So where and, uh, can I find you? Oh, sorry, go on. I, yeah, I just wanted to congratulate, you know, the effort that you guys make to push Soka um, to the world. You know, we appreciate all of you for Thank what you do. And um, yeah, I just wanted to say thanks. Thanks for the opportunity and um, and you guys continue to do what you guys do. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. So where yeah. can we find you on social media? Um, at College Boy Jesse. That That's is my. Where? Yeah, feel free to follow me there. My website is collegeboymusic.com. Um, you guys can subscribe to the YouTube channel, you know, College Boy Jesse. And um, follow the team, follow Zig Boy. And Izzy Vibes. Okay, no problem. Definitely. So thank you again for joining Thanks. us live. We will catch up soon. Catching up with you. <laughs> <laughs> we have some catching up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, take care. Speak to you soon, yeah? All right, Bye. take care. I don't know if I'm doing this right. Am I doing this right? <laughs> okay, everyone, that's college boy Jesse that I just spoke to. So, yes, it was, he seems really nice and he's so busy. Like, he's doing so much. He's doing so much for the soca community. Like, he's, I'm just proud. Like, it's just so nice to see that all the artists are still pushing soca, like soca's dropping like like there is still carnival. So it's just amazing to watch. So thank you everyone for tuning in to the live. You've tuned in. Also, if you'd like to, you know, get an interview with us, DM us, you know, we'd love to hear from you. So yes, thank you again for joining me live, all right? I'm gonna sign out now. So everyone enjoy the rest of your evening. And we will catch you guys next week.